Assalamu alaikum. Get to know your Lord. First part of the Right Belief series by Sheikh Karim Abu Zaid. This dynamic literary work of art's main goal is to revive an understanding the names and attributes of Allah. In understanding the name and attributes of Allah will elevate our faith strengthening us and keep us steadfast. This wonderful book is now available in an audiobook format and can be found free of charge on YouTube channel Karim Abu Zaid. Get to know your Lord. You have nothing to lose. It's a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. You will make it through. The fifth is awakening you. With Quran and Sunnah on his side, here's a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. With Quran and Sunnah on his side, here's a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. Our class here, uh, which is uh, our Aqidah class, and we are discussing in depth the concept and the principles of uh, of wala wal bara, you know, allegiance and disassociation in Islam. How, as Muslims, our allegiance is supposed to be to Allah, to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to the Muslims around the earth, no matter around the world, no matter where they are, who they are, what race, what color they are. And also our allegiance is to this religion. And this is a terrible thing that we're experiencing today. Uh, most Muslims, especially those of us living in the West, we have a hard time uh, understanding, and I believe it's because no one has broke it down in English well enough to you. There's this concept of wala wal bara, you know, we don't know that that's part of the shahada. We don't understand that what it means to say that my allegiance is to Allah. When I say that my allegiance is to Allah, what does that mean? That means that uh, the things that Allah hates, I stay away from. The things that Allah loves, I, I, I do. Allah hates everything that he made haram. So since my allegiance is to him, I'm going to be careful given my opinion in this religion about the lawful and the unlawful. This is a big problem. Most Muslims today don't know what's lawful and what is unlawful, okay? Because we haven't studied the, the, the religion from people of, the, uh, of knowledge like we should have. OK, so we make our own rules. We, we, we say things are haram that we don't understand when they're not. OK, when I say that my allegiance is to the prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then that means I'm going to obey him and everything he said, because he didn't speak from his desires. He was inspired by a law. So if he tells us not to do something, I'm not going to do it. If he tells, encourages us to do something, then I will do it. OK, we have to work on this. And the hardest part is disassociation. What does that mean? That means living in the West, I'm going to disassociate and not involve myself in anything that contradicts what Allah says, that contradicts what the prophet said, that contradicts Islamic morality, more Islamic values like voting in presidential elections. None of us should have anything to say about that. That ain't none of our business. We don't dip in elections of presidents because first of all, they're non-Muslims and a non-Muslim can never and never will represent us, okay? So I'm gonna disassociate from that. I have nothing to do with that. I have no comments to make about it. I'm not gonna participate in it. I'm not gonna stand with people uh, to, who are doing it or any of that. Another example, Allah uh, hates uh, uh, LGBTQ, okay? 
So that means I'm not going to have no involvement in this issue. I'm not going to march with people who are marching for that. I'm not going to make comments about that to support it. I'm not going to have a stand with you about it. You don't include me in your business with it. That's disassociation because it totally contradicts my beliefs, my way of life. But this is not what a lot of people are doing. We got Muslim men and women in America who are very well known, who call themselves scholars. They're uh, standing with people who support the LGBTQ. They're telling you that uh, uh, we, we, we say that it contradicts our Islamic morals, but everybody still should have the right to do what they want. Is that what Allah said? Allah doesn't speak like that. Allah doesn't tell you to do something on one hand, but don't do it on another. No, we shouldn't have no involvement with this stuff at all. Disassociate. American politics is not the place for Muslims. We are Muslims. You know, we don't believe in that democracy. We don't believe in that republic stuff. We definitely can't support people who are non-Muslims, whose agenda is nothing like ours. So we get along with these people. We live in this country. We respect the rules and laws here. We don't break them here, but we're not gonna compromise our identity. We're not gonna compromise our beliefs either in the process. So Muslims should stand back Stand back and just watch the fireworks. That's all. Stand back and watch from a distance. But as far as you stip, st uh, sticking your foot in it, your hand in it, your mouth in it to support it and join in, we don't do that. And that's what we're speaking about. And we're going to wrap this chapter up tonight. Uh, uh, and so let me put the PowerPoint up on the screen. Uh, and again, where this is a book um, uh, written by Sheikh Karim Abu Zaid. Uh, this is the third of the trilogy. Make sure you guys purchase this book at Amazon. The book is only $19.99. In fact, get all three of them. And also get the purchase the book, The Metcalcidic. Let me put that picture up uh, so y'all can see the Metcalcidic Tafsir because this is the other series of his I'm teaching on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's a picture of the book, The Met Called Cynic Tafsir, Volume 1 by Sheikh Karim Abu Zaid. Make sure you guys go to Amazon.com and uh, get a copy of that book as well, $19.99 for all his books. So with that said, let me put the PowerPoint up on the screen for all of us, because we have another class. I want you guys to stick around. I will keep this stream going because Mukhtar will be joining to do the life of Khalid bin Walid. May Allah be pleased with him. So make sure everyone sticks around, okay? For the Because uh, I'm gonna keep this stream going for his class. So let me switch. Okay. And inshallah, you guys should be able to see now. Oh, it's going to register for y'all in a minute. And I forgot to put the page number up, but we're starting at page 459. And we'll complete the, we'll go all the way to the end of the chapter. We're completing this chapter on interfaith. This is the chapter on interfaith relations. And inshallah, I'm going to complete it for you now. We're going to speak about, again, how to deal with people whose belief system and ideologies are different than us without compromising our own, which, as you can see, these famous brothers in Texas are having a hard time with that. I'm giving the, the that's where they are. They're in Texas. And they're the ones telling you to go ahead and uh, vote and all that when it's haram to vote. So we have nothing to do with any of these uh, uh, political elections, okay? These brothers have transgressed. They don't know how to hold and when to hold and when to fold. They shouldn't have put their foot in the ring anyway because it's not our business. 
our laws are for, are for us, their laws are for them. It's not our concern. As the law says, they'll never have our interests at heart. We'll always be their enemy and they will never rule in favor of us for anything. You are never going to have a voice with uh, by appointing a non-Muslim as a ruler over you. And definitely not a woman. The prophet already said anybody stupid enough to put a woman to make a woman a leader over your nation, your nation will fail. It will never succeed. All right. So we're going to speak more and we're going to start at page 459 and end this chapter. And I want us to ponder this verse, another verse. Allah says in the Quran, in the interpretation, the meaning, you will not find anyone who believes in Allah, who really believes in Allah and who believes in the last day, making friendships with people who oppose Allah and his messenger. You know, we want to know what are the signs of a believer? One of the signs of the believer is he's not going to sit around holding hands. He's not going to refer to a non-Muslim, especially a non-Muslim that's, that's advocating uh, LGBTQ. Allah hates LGBTQ. You would never find a believer of, of referring to an LGBTQT leader as being his friend. And they're holding hands together, marching. They're holding hands together uh, at a rally, at, you know, at a rally, a presidential rally. You know, these are not people who truly believe in Allah and who fear the last day. These are people who say what they don't do. Remember, the prophet said, whatever is in your heart, <clears throat> whatever is in your heart will show through your actions. If I truly am a believer, if I believe in Allah and fear his punishment in my heart, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't be marching with the LGBTQ. I wouldn't be marching advocating anything that contradicts Islam. So the Muslims face this challenge of maintaining our distinct religious identity especially when we're dealing we we choose to dip our nose in the interfaith relationships of others you got to know when to hold and know when to fold el wala wal bara it calls for loyalty only towards those who follow our teachings and to dis disassociate from those who contradict them. You wouldn't see me holding hands with a rainbow coalition. You won't see me at a rainbow coalition event speaking. You won't see me at an event of dope dealers, drug dealers, none of that stuff. That stuff, you know, contradicts Islam. Remember the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you will never be a believer until you love for the sake of Allah and hate for the sake of Allah. What does that mean? You love what Allah loves and hate what Allah hates. He hates LGBTQ. He hates uh, gun violence. He hates racism. So we don't support that crap. Also, listen to this. Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning, Allah does not forbid you from those who don't fight against you because of your religion and who are not expelling you from your homes, who are not preventing you from being righteous, okay? Allah says, act righteous towards them and be just towards them because Allah loves those who are just. So even though a platform, uh, an interfaith platform is advocating uh, for, on their agenda, the LGBTQ, also women's rights and justice for all. You support the justice for all regardless of race. But in our way of life, we don't support that women's rights stuff, not the rights that they're advocating. They are advocating for women to have the choice to be a man. Oh no, Allah gave us our roles. Allah gave us our, uh, our uh, 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 identities. So I'm not supporting that. So I'm not partaking in, in the event at all. And that's where we find these brothers blurring the line. They'll say, oh, well, I'm supporting this rally because it's good to stand up against racism. But the rally also is for LGBTQs too. 
We don't take part in any of it. You tell them unless they're advocating only justice in regards to race, I'm not having anything to do with this platform at all. Okay? A, a, a Muslim is invited to a non-Muslim event that includes pr practices that contradict us. We disassociate. We tell them, I, I cannot attend. Thank you for inviting me, but I cannot attend or participate because I can't support uh, two issues on your agenda. You got LGBTQ and you got women's rights. I can't support that. Even though I can support racism, I can support equality and, 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 and grace, I, those two things ha I have to disconnect from. So I disconnect from this uh, agenda completely. And again, people may try to pressure you to compromise your beliefs. They tried to pressure the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They tried to say, oh, the good outweighs the evil. These people, they don't like what's happening in Palestine, the people might tell you today. They don't, this a person that's running for office doesn't like to, to, to see people dying in Gaza. This person also hates racism. Also, the, uh, the only problem we have is LGBTQ. Well, the good outweighs the bad. We should support it. We don't support LGBTQ, but we're not going to just say anything on that issue. But we'll join them on the rest. No, you have to disconnect. The prophet didn't accept some things that's haram and then reject others. He's totally disconnected. Yes, that LGBTQ issue is a big issue. It's one of the Ten Commandments. I'm totally going to disengage, disassociate. I have nothing to do with your politics, America. Even though some things that the people are advocating sound good, because they're not going to honor them anyway. This is America. This is a non-Muslim society. They're not going to honor any of that stuff. Okay? I'm disassociating completely from it. Because one bad apple does spoil the whole bunch. Don't get it twisted, Muslims. One bad apple does spoil the whole bunch. You can't stand there and say, oh, the only issue we have is, is LGBTQ. We need to support. No, dip your nose out. This ain't our affair. American politics is not our affair. We disengage. We're out. We don't participate, period. Okay? So, El Wela Welbara it offers us Muslims a framework where we can sit down with other people and try to find common ground. But it takes a strong believing Muslim to let them know it's either all or nothing. It's either all or nothing. We don't compromise. Yes, five of your issues are good, but you got one bad issue. That one bad issue has destroyed all the other five, so I disengage. When you guys are only going to advocate the five, call me. If you're going to throw in the, the, this one, I can't be involved. Don't ask for my vote. Don't ask for my support because Allah says in the Quran, help each other in good, not in evil. Allah says in the Quran, don't sit in the company of people who do evil. So I can't do your rallies with you. I can't do your marches with you because Allah tells me don't even be in the company of those who are advocating something that totally, totally is disliked by him. So we disengage. And that's what I wanted to go over uh, uh, with everyone uh, here uh, uh, today. You know, we're living in a time where as America has their elections going, and I know many of you are in parts of America where we have these um, very famous, very famous speakers who many of you think are scholars, but they're not scholars. Wouldn't no scholar be participating in that garbage? OK, we have to disengage my message. 
No Muslim should be voicing their opinion or anything else about this election because Allah already done voiced it for us. He told us we can't participate because there ain't no Muslim candidates running. He also said they will never, they will never have your interests at heart. He, and he said uh, non-Muslims can never be rulers and leaders over us because they will never have our interests at heart. They'll never listen to us. They'll never uh, do want to do anything except bring ruin to us. So disengage. You belong to a mosque. And they got these Muslim, I mean, they got these non-Muslim candidates coming into your mosque talking about voting. That's a mosque I ain't going to. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Where's the Quran? Where's the Sunnah here in this community? We don't participate in that. What you having these Kafirs coming here for? We can't vote for them. They're never going to have our interests at, at heart. We, we did that with Obama. And look what he did. He's the one that sent the weapons. Like Allah says, they only want our ruin. So in the game of politics, for voting, this is an issue that we don't dip our nose, our mouth, our hand, our opinions in at all because Allah is clear. The nasses, the verses are clear. And I really hope you sisters and brothers have listened to me because with this chapter, I've given you all the Dalil from the Quran, examples from the prophet, examples from the companions. They never did that crap. They never voted for no Kafir. They never participated in that garbage. And they lived in Kafir lands too. How do you think Islam spread? All right. So I'm going to stop right here.